So today I will go through exam uh, three for last semester, uh, fall 2019. We have th six question. First question, we are looking for centroid for this cross section. We are looking for centroid for this cross section. Centroid only, nothing else. So I will assume uh, this cross section can be divided into this triangle, right angle triangle, and this square, and this square, and these two circles. Remember, and be careful. And I give it to you one time before in one of the quizzes. This area will be subtracted. This area will be subtracted. This area will be subtracted. Make sure you understand this point. I'm gonna assume I have a reference here at the lowest edge and another reference here at the left edge and next step i will go to set up a table do you remember that number of uh, parts how many let's start with this one number one this circle number two number three this triangle number four this is square number five. It's up to you. You can uh, rearrange these labels. One of you will say, hey, no, I don't like this label. So what you are looking for? I'm looking for, this is number one, this triangle number two, this circle number three, this circle number four, this is square number five. It's up to you. Okay? It's up to you. But make sure you understand the concept. Let's start. Number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. What is the area of each part? The area of number four is a square four times four, 16. The area of number two, part number two, is a triangle, triangle, right angle triangle. Have time three time four, six. Guys, this right angle triangle with dimension three times four so the area will be one half three times four the third one is a circle with diameter one feet so the area of this circle by, uh, by divide four time diameter square it will be point seven eight negative i need to subtract part number three Area number four, negative, 0.78 also. Area number five is a square, one feet times one feet. The area is one feet, negative. Make sure you are subtracting the holes. So if you would like to get the summation of area, the summation of this column will be 16 plus 6 minus 0.78 minus 0.78 minus 1 the final area will be 19.44 next step what is the distance x bar for each part let's start part number one here is the centroid of part number one 
the horizontal distance how much it will be two part number two this right angle triangle the centroid will be located here what is the horizontal distance between this centroid and your assumed reference the total distance will be this distance is three one third will be one plus two plus two so we have five circle number uh, part number three is a circle the centroid here will be at distance two circle number four uh, the second circle two this square has centroid at this location so the horizontal distance between this centroid and this reference will be 2 plus 2 plus 0.5 it will be 4.5 these distance without signs you don't need to add positive or negative because distance is a positive value then I will multiply this column by this column area time x bar let's see 32 30 negative 0.78 time 2 it will be negative 1.56 negative 1.56 negative 4.5 Go ahead and get the summation. Area time x bar, 32 plus 30 minus 1.56 minus 1.56 minus 4.5. The summation will be 54.4. Any question so far? Do you have any question so far? Okay, looks good. Then I will figure out the distance y bar for each part. What is the vertical distance between this centroid and this reference will be have four will be two. Between this centroid and the assumed reference, it will, it will be two third of four. Guys, do you remember any right angle triangle? This centroid has a distance from this side one third of three. This side will be one third of four because the vertical distance is four. So the remaining distance between this centroid and the assumed reference will be two third of four. This is what I did. Anyway, for this circle, the vertical distance will be one. Second circle, the vertical distance will be three. The square, this is square, the vertical distance will be, the total distance is four minus 0 0.5, it will be 3.5. Go ahead and multiply this column by this column to get area time y bar. So we have 16 times 232. We have 6 times 2 thirds of 4. 16. Uh, negative 0 0.78 times 1. Negative 0 0.78 times 3 it will be negative 2.34. Negative 1 times 3.5, negative 3.5. Go ahead and get the summation of area y bar. So 32 plus 16 minus 0 0.78 minus 2.34 minus 3.5. This value will be 41.38. Finally, to get the centroid, x bar for the centroid will be summation area x bar divide summation area. So 54.4 divide summation area 19.44. I can get this value. 
2.8 y bar it will be summation area of y bar divide summation of area so 41.38 divide summation of area 19.44 this value will be 2.1 here is the centroid so the idea in this example make sure when you are dividing this cross section to parts make sure this part will be subtracted this part will be subtracted this part will be subtracted you need only to add positive or negative for this column for area nothing else when you multiply this column by this column make sure you are including the sign so negative area time two will be negative negative area time two will be negative negative area time uh, distance 4.5 it will be negative so when you add this column you have to include the signs so you are subtracting the holes in this cross section so this problem asking for centroid only any question so far do you have any question guys do you have any question looks good second question we are looking for i x and i y guys for this cross section i don't need to search where is the centroid for one reason centroid will be at the midpoint i can put here x-axis and i can put here y-axis why because this cross section is symmetric Th symmetric means uh, x-axis divided this cross section to two identical parts and y-axis divide this cross section to two identical parts so i don't need to to search for centroid the centroid will be here where i can put x-axis and y-axis okay go ahead and figure out how to uh, get ix and iy what do you think anybody has any suggestion for this problem do you have any suggestion i need to hear from you do you have any suggestion for this problem problem number two how many parts what do you think how many parts Two parts, Mitchell. Why three tables? Why three tables? Why you are looking for three tables? Okay, X bar and Y bar to search for the centroid. And I told you the centroid is here. Do you think you still need to search for the centroid? The centroid is here. So I don't need to set up a table for X bar and Y bar to get the centroid because the centroid is already located. So the table to figure out the centroid no need to set up this table anymore for this problem for this problem okay thank you david yes i will divide 
this cross section not to two bars but three bars can you watch me the first part is this one the whole rectangle this distance 120 this distance 140 do you agree this is the first part part number one Part number two will be this area that will be subtracted. Part number three will be the other area that will be subtracted. Do you agree? Let's see. Table number one for IX. Number of parts, part number one, number two, number three. What is the area for part number one? Do you remember which, uh, what was the part number one? The whole rectangle. So the area for this rectangle will be 120 times 140. 16,800. Part number two, what is the dimension of part number two? Can you figure it out? The vertical dimension, 120. The horizontal dimension, how much? Will be 45. The total distance is 120. Subtract this one, subtract this one, subtract this one, divide by two. I can figure out what is the length here and what is the length here. 45 and 45. So the area of part number two, 120 times 45, it will be 5,400 negative. Part number three will be the same, negative 5,400. What is the moment of inertia for each part? Do you remember that? The part number one, parallel time perpendicular cube over 12. So we have 120. Parallel time, 140. Cube over 12. We have second part, parallel to x, 45. Time 120 cube over 12. Remember, this part is negative. We need to subtract this part. So I need to add negative. Part number three, the same. 45 time 120 cube over 12, negative. Can I get the submission here? You can. The next column, what is the distance D? Remember, here is the X axis and here is the Y axis. The distance between centroid for the whole cross section and the centroid or X axis, it will be zero. The distance between this centroid of this part and the x-axis is zero. The distance between centroid of this bar, part number three, and the x-axis is zero. If you multiply area time d square, you can get zero, zero, zero. Go ahead and get the summation. The final i x will be this term plus this term you can get the final IX. Very easy. I need to set up another table for I, Y. Number of part, part number one, two, and three. I would like to remind you the first part, 
120 times 140. Part number two, part number three. Here is x axis, here is y axis. This distance 45, this distance 120. Let's see. What is the area of each part? We can use the previous area. 16,800, negative 5,400, negative 5,400. What is the value of IY? IY parallel time perpendicular cube over 12. Parallel for what? For Y. Which one is parallel for Y? 140. Time 120 cube over 12. For this part, parallel to Y will be 120. Time 45 cube over 12. Don't forget, this part will be negative. We need to subtract it. Then, this part will be the same, negative 120 times 45 cube over 12. What is the distance D? The centroid for the whole part is here. What is the distance between this centroid and Y axis? Zero. The centroid for this part is here. What is the distance between this part, the centroid here, and Y axis? I think this distance will be 22.5 plus 5. It will be 27.5. Also, the distance between this centroid and Y axis will be 27.5. Go ahead and multiply this column by square of this column. Area D squared. I can figure out this one and this one. And this one, make sure this one will be positive. This one will be negative. This one will be negative. So go ahead and get the submission. Go ahead and get the submission. The final IY will be this term plus this term. You can get the IY. Any question? Guys, do you have any question? So the idea of whole cross section, and you need to subtract something, this idea is very important. And it will make the uh, cross section or the solution more easy. Any question? Okay. Uh, we have a problem related to projectile, but in a different way. Different story. Make sure you understand it. We have a ball. It's kicked at an angle 35 degree to hit this target, which is 30 meter away and 1.8 meter up the ground. Can you tell me what is the initial velocity required to hit this target at this location? We have someone here kicking a ball with initial velocity. I don't know how much, but the inclined angle for this initial velocity, 35. The ball will take a, bear, a parabolic path until hitting a target in the space, not on the ground. This target at horizontal distance x equals 30 
and the vertical distance y equal 1.8 meter. Can you tell me what will be the initial velocity required to hit this target? Even for soccer players, they are learning projectile. So guys, what do you think? If you go back to projectile nodes, you can find two equations. The first one for x equal v naught cosine theta time t plus x naught. And we have another equation for y equal negative g t square divide 2 plus v naught sine theta time t plus y naught. And fortunately, if you are using the first one for x, okay, I know what is the value of x for this target, equal 30 meter, but uh, on the right side, we have v naught, we have t, the time. Two of them are unknowns. If you are using the next equation for y, y equal 1.8, that's fine. But on the right hand side, we have t, we have v naught, unknowns. So how can we figure out the unknowns for v naught? You need to set up two equations and solve them together. First one, x equal 30 meter. Equal v naught cosine 35 time t plus x naught zero. That means... If you put V naught in one side, the other side will be 30 divide T time cosine 35. You can simplify it. 30 divide cosine 35. It will be 36.6 divide T. So V naught equal 36.6 divide, uh, divide T. Equation number one from x equation equation number two y equal 1.8 equal negative g 9.81 t square divide 2 plus v naught sine 35 time t plus y naught go ahead and remove v naught and about the equivalent value so 1.8 equal negative 9.81 divide 2 it will be 4.905 t square plus v naught equal 36.6 divide t sine 35 time t i believe i can cancel this t and this t So, 4.905 t square. I moved it to the other side. On this side, we will have 36.6 times cosine 35 minus 1.8 will be 19.90. From this equation, I can get t square equal 19.19 divide 4.905. It will be 3.91. So T will be 1.98 seconds. Once you figured out the required time for this ball to hit this target, I can use this T in this equation to figure out the v naught v naught equal 36.6 divide t which is 1.98 so i can figure out the initial velocity it will be 18.5 meter per second 
The second one, what is the time for the ball to reach the target? You get it. 1.98 seconds. But the main idea in this problem, we are not using equation for X only or equation for Y only. No, we are using both of them at the same time and solve them together to figure out the unknown. If you go back to your notes, you can find we are using only one of them, this one only or this one only. But in this situation, we are using both of them. And one more thing, in this equation, in this problem, the target is not, or the final destination is not on the ground. No, we have a value for Y and we already have value for X. Any question? Do you have any question? This problem, we have a ball was kicked at the top of the building with initial velocity 75 meter per second. This ball will reach to the highest point until V equals zero. We don't have velocity, so the, the ball will be stopped. Then it will return back to hit the ground. We need to figure out the maximum height, SB, reached by the ball, this total height. You already get this problem in your quiz. Uh, remember, we have constant acceleration equal 9.81. And we have a relationship between velocity equal a naught t minus t naught plus v naught. And we have s equal a naught time t minus t naught squared divide 2 plus v naught t minus t naught plus s naught. And remember, guys, if you go back to your notes, we have a, a, a force. Equation V naught equal V square equal V naught square plus A two A naught S minus S naught. I'm gonna use this one. I told you from this position we have initial velocity 75, so we have 75 square. At the final location here, the velocity will be zero because the, the ball will be stopped. So final velocity will be zero square. Because the ball is going up, your acceleration will be negative. 9.81. S minus, I'm looking for this S only, minus initial uh, displacement or initial S naught is zero. We don't have initial at this location. The only unknown is S. It will be Two hundred eighty six point seven meter. But we are looking for the total height. Total height is measured from the ground surface. So total height, which you called SB, will be this S, which is two hundred eighty six point seven plus the height of the building, which is forty meter. So the total height will be. 200, uh, I'm sorry, 326.7 meter. Then the speed of the ball just before hitting the ground. Okay, you can go back. Initial velocity, the second journey. Initial velocity here will be zero. Final velocity here will be unknown. Your S equal 326.7. So I can use this, the same equation to figure out the final velocity. I think most of you did it correctly in the quiz. Question number five. We have airplane lands with an initial velocity V naught equal 70 meter per second. Then decelerates, acceleration equal negative decelerates means decreasing negative 1.5 meter per second where 
for 40 second if the time equal 40 second what will be the final velocity okay your velocity equal a naught time t minus t naught plus v naught go ahead and put your numbers that's it acceleration is negative 1.5 make sure the accelerates is negative accelerates is positive your time is 40 second initial time we don't have initial initial velocity equals 70 i can figure out the final velocity we have suppose a car merges into freeway traffic on 200 meter long ramp if its initial velocity v naught equal 10 meter per second accelerates acceleration equal positive 2 meter per second square how long means the time it will take for the car to travel is 200 meter that's it we have equation s equal a naught t minus t naught square divide 2 plus v naught t minus t naught plus s naught we don't have initial displacement we don't have initial time we don't have initial time go ahead and put s equal 200 acceleration equal 2 meter per second square t square divide 2 v naught initial velocity 10 time t we have equation with one unknown is t so i can figure out the value of t to figure out how long how long means time question number six we have theta the angular position equal five t to power four minus seven t to power three plus eight t we are looking for what is the angular velocity omega what is the angular acceleration alpha do you remember that omega equal d theta equal uh, divide dt differentiation so we will have 20 t to power th 3 minus 21 t square plus 8 uh, alpha d omega by dt so we have 60 t square minus 42 t that's it we are looking for angular acceleration and the angular velocity at t equal two seconds go ahead and put t equal two seconds to figure out the value of omega and the value of alpha very easy last problem in this exam we have acceleration equal 2t plus 5. we are looking for velocity so do you remember that acceleration equal dv by dt but if you are looking for velocity you have to integrate acceleration with respect to t so velocity will be uh, 2t square divide the new power 2 plus 5t plus constant because we have unlimited integration how can I figure out the value of constant? We have uh, information here saying if the particle has an initial velocity, what is the meaning of initial velocity? Do you remember that? Initial velocity means at time equal zero, velocity equal two meter per second. So put V equal two, time equal zero time equal zero you can figure out the value of the constant so finally the velocity v equal 2 t squared divided 2 plus 5 t plus the value of the constant equal 2 so i can figure out velocity at time equal 4 second so if you look to this exam You can expect the exam number three for next week, but please add one more question for friction.
So we can expect friction, question, section properties, probably centroid, section properties, probably I'm looking for IX and IY. We don't have issue with centroid in this problem. Uh, projectile and uh, principles of dynamics. Constant acceleration, constant acceleration or differentiation and integration. 